I want all you skinheads to get up on your feet. Put your braces together and your boots on your feet. I was born and raised in the United States of America. So when I hear the word skinhead, I immediately think of Doc Martin wearing bald headed racists. Now my regular subscribers already know the relationship that I have with dancehall and Jamaican culture overall. So it came as quite a shock to me to find out that Jamaicans and skinheads have such an interesting history together. In the early 70s, reggae inspired both the West Indian community and the white working class fans. First mods, then skinheads. So in some ways for us, it became our music, so to speak, uh, uh, because I suppose the lyrics and sentiment was sort of like, well, it was to do with a rebel stance, which we all associated with. This protest music, protest against injustice of people and all them things, right? And they saw me as a rebel and identified themselves as such. So there was some compatibility there. I think so, because you, you should see them. An anthem of the skinheads was Max Romeo's Wet Dreams. Here's the story of the Jamaican skinheads. The skinheads emerged in the 1960s in London, England. Skinheads generally grew up in poor government housing projects or low-income neighborhoods and formed in opposition of the hippie movement of the generally middle-class kids that didn't share the same lifestyle. Around this time, Jamaican immigrants entered the UK and settled in the same neighborhoods as these skinheads. For the most part, they got along in the beginning and began to embrace each other's cultures. The skinheads basically adopted the elements of the mod culture which preceded them, as well as the rude boy culture found among their Jamaican counterparts. First and second generation skinheads wore variations of mod and rude boy fashions and listened to reggae, ska, and rocksteady. Speaking of fashion, my brand new merch line Designed by me, everybody rates Yard, everyone respects Yard, E-R-Y, is available for purchase now. You can see the YouTube merch shelf right under my video. I'll also put the link to the store in the description and also go follow up my IG page. We have five different collections, five different designs, tons of colors tons of sizes and we have women's apparel kids apparel we have pullovers sweatshirts v-necks regular t-shirts we got posters stickers we have it all and i put a lot of work into it so please go check it out everybody rates yard the appearance of the skinheads was the close cropped or shaven heads and they actually did that to be easily identifiable next to the long-haired hippies. They also wore Doc Martin boots or steel-toed boots and suspenders, which they call braces, straight leg jeans and button-down collar shirts. And they were listening to groups like The Specials, Simmer Rip, Desmond Decker, The Ethiopians, Pioneers. And the upsetters among others. I am the Avenger. You'll never get away from me. I am the upsetter. The original skinheads were black and white. The skinheads made a resurgence at this time, and a genre of music called two-tone was created. 
It was a fusion of traditional Jamaican ska mixed with new wave and punk rock. It was named Two Tone because of the record label Two Tone Records, founded in 1979 by Jerry Dammers of The Specials. The label was created to help diffuse racial tensions in the Margaret Thatcher era of Britain. A lot of the Two Tone bands were multiracial. Some of the bands considered to be Two Tone were the beat. The specials, a message to you, Rudy. A message to you. The selector, madness, got to be near you every night, every day. Bad manners. and the Body Snatchers, among others. The logo for Two Tone Records was based on a photograph of Peter Tosh and had a man in a black suit, white shirt, black tie, black pork pie hat, white socks and black loafers, along with black and white checkers, symbolizing unity. Sadly, the skinhead revival of the late 70s also included a sizable white nationalist faction such as the Rock Against Communism, the National Front, and the British Movement. The mainstream media began to label the whole skinhead identity as a neo-fascist white power movement. And once the mainstream media got a hold of it, the white power skinhead movement spread to the United States and other countries. In 1986, Sharp was formed by a skinhead named Marcus in New York City as a response to the growing white power skinheads of the time. Sharp stands for Skinheads Against Racial Prejudice. They formed as a way to show that the skinhead subculture was not based on racism or political extremism. In 1989, Roddy Moreno of the Welsh band The Oppressed met with some of the NYC Sharp members. He then returned to the UK and designed a new Sharp logo based on the Trojan Reggae label's design. So Trojan skinheads or traditional skinheads, trads, are not racist and represent the influence of the original British slash Jamaican skins of the 60s. They are still confused with the racist skinheads for their similar styles of fashion though. So next time you see a skinhead, ask them what type of skinhead they are before you punch them in the face. One love.